Everyone dreams of one day finding their soulmate, walking down the aisle, saying their vowels, committing to someone for better or for worse. At times, it seems like the idea of monogamy and marriage is just that, a far off dream, a figment of the imagination, almost an archaic practice, which no one truly subscribes to anymore. Which begs the question, is monogamy really natural? That's what we'll be discussing on this episode of Keiko Talks, Flesh Chat. So Courtney, we're gonna go, um, Courtney's gonna explain some definitions so we can have a better grasp of what marriage is, monogamy, the different types of relationships that you can have today in the 21st century. And then we're going to get on to get on into our chat. Yeah. So um, like Kaylin was saying, I'm going to get some definitions of um, monogamy and just really like relationship types that we're, we're starting to see up, uh, see like really become more popular or more, I guess, acceptable. I'm not going to say popular because they've probably always been here, but more acceptable and more discussed openly, I guess, in our society. So the first one is what we all know, um, monogamy. So monogamy is a practice or state of being married or to one person at a time or in a sexual relationship with one person at a time. Monogamy is usually like something we think of in the long term, like I'm in a monogamous, again, marriage with my husband or my wife, somebody, I select one partner, I stick with that partner, and it's typically lifelong, right? Or mm-hmm. it's implied that it's lifelong. And then marriage. So the definition of marriage is the legal or formally rec- recognized union of two people as partners in the personal relationship. Historically, and in some jurisdictions, is specifically a union between a man and a woman. So that's talking about heterosexual marriage. So again, marriage is not necessarily the same thing as monogamy. Monogamy refers to the nature of the relationship. So you can be mm-hmm. in a monogamous relationship and not be married. Marriage is the legally recognized union of two people. So that's like the state sanctioned uh, union of two individuals. Mm-hmm. So we're all clear. I do think those things, uh, especially in this day and age, are um, oftentimes confused, um, but they are they are separate separate things. Monogamy and marriage are not one and the same. You can have monogamy in a marriage, um, but monogamy does not mean marriage. Yes. And I think also the way our state recognizes marriage is usually in a monogamous way, meaning one marriage Mm -hmm. to one person. Absolutely. Um, I think I don't think any states recognize polygamy, which is the next definition. Actually, I don't think any states recognize marriage to multiple people, but I could be wrong. I so think I so. think in the United States, like culturally as well as legally, marriage is between two individuals. So marriage is, in most people's mind, is really tied to monogamy. That's why when people say monogamous relationship, they usually think it's meaning a marriage, um, mm-hmm. which again, you can be in a monogamous relationship and not be married. So just so we're clear for the rest of the conversation, when we discuss those two different terms, you know, they're not one and the same. Mm-hmm. So Polygamy, on the other hand, what I was actually just talking about is a practice of having one or more wife or husband. So that's being married to multiple people at the same time. Mm -hmm. Right. And then polyamory, another definition, is the practice of engaging in multiple romantic or in sexual relationships with the consent of all people involved. So polyamory is basically um, being in multiple relationships at the same time time if you are a polygamous person married to multiple people at the same time you're also typically polyamorous because you're also engaged in a romantic or sexual relationship with individuals the same individuals at the same time you think so i would imagine so because you can't be you can't have wife number one two and three and then not be involved in a relationship with right wife one two and three like you know what I mean? But for like, okay, so you say that there's that one husband, right? He's mm-hmm. involved with wife one, two, and three, but the women may not be involved. Like, um, I think of like the F, I think it's FLDS or something like that community where they have the husbands are married to multiple women, but he just goes from home to home typically, or um, they live in the same home but in different quarters of the home. They don't necessarily interact per se. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. For the man, yes, he he would definitely be polyamorous because he's involved in mm-hmm. remote. remote that romantic relationships with multiple women that doesn't gotcha, necessarily seriously. mean that the women yeah. are in a polyamorous relationship but they are mm-hmm. they've consented to a polygamous relationship at the end of the day 
got they it. Might not I mean, that's really polyamorous. So mm-hmm. I guess I'll, I'll take back my statement. I don't think you absolutely have to be. I think they go hand in hand. It's like typically I could see how one, if you're polyamorous, you would you could get into poly, polygamy. Mm-hmm. But again, it's a it's consent and it's how you define your relationship. For sure. Yeah. I think if all parties are dating, then polyamory. If one party is dating, then it's polygamy. Though that one person mm-hmm. may be polyamorous. Pending, mar- pending there's actually a marriage because you could be polyamorous mm-hmm. with no marriage. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. honestly, these are root words, you know, to go back to English. Gammy is a marriage. So poly, gammy, multiple marriages. Ma- monogamy, mm-hmm. gammy, that is marriage. Amory, love, mm-hmm. right? So multiple loves. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. So you can get down, you can just look at the word and literally see it. Break down the meanings of the words and figure out what it what it's referring to and the differences that they imply for relationships. Okay. So a good little English lesson there. Yeah, no, those are yeah, but I think they're important so you know the nature of people's relationships. Because obviously relationships get very it's dependent upon the person and the it's individualistic. So you can't say one one thing is totally one or the other, you know. So For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We just want to establish those definitions because we're gonna be discussing this a good bit in the next, you know, in this next episode. So we wanna make sure those definitions are clear so people understand what what we're talking about exactly, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, before we get into discussion, another thing to that a lot of people like to bring up is um, that the idea of like, how did monogamy really come into being? And then obviously people bring up like evolution when it comes to that, and like species and like the first thing people want to do when it comes up to when it comes to relationships is like, this is how we are naturally, biologically. I have to, you know, have multiple girlfriends, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like that's the first thing people want to say. But upon research, I found out that... um Monogamy actually evolved, or monogamy, we see monogamy in more than obviously human species, but it kind of came about as an evolutionary practice, as a mating practice, because it's actually better for the male of the species to be able to produce by being in a monogamous relationship in certain instances. Hmm. Because basically what I what I came across and learned is that because when females of a population, say we're talking about bears, if there's like female bears who are living separately and in dis- in different parts of the, you know, the forest or whatever, and they're not in a group setting, it's harder for the male to go and find, um, to to have access, I guess, to to the kind to a female bear if there's not enough I guess in like his surrounding area to kind of choose to have multiple partners like Mm -hmm. he can't necessarily have you know if me and you are female bears and you live 300 miles down the coast and the another female bear lives 300 miles down uh, 200 miles down the coast and you're 200 300 miles down the coast or whatever and we're in different areas it's easier for him to make ensure that his genes get passed on if he finds one bear chooses one bear stays with that one bear versus trying to gather all three bears be traveling Mm -hmm. you know 1200 miles to try to gather all bears if he doesn't already have competition from other males yeah okay that makes sense taking access to the resources so it's like you find one stick with that one reproduce as many times as possible with that one Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. why monogamy Mm -hmm. why scientists are saying like monogamy developed as a mating practice because it's Mm -hmm. it's a way to ensure your genes at least get passed on to someone even if they don't get passed on to as many as possible they at least get passed on so you choose one person stick with them you know what i mean makes sense yeah so, and then they um, they note that a lot of animals practice social monogamy, which is basically long-term living arrangements between adult males and females, like heterogen, hetero, 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 heterogeneous pairs, excuse me. So like male and female species um, living together for a long period of time, ma- mating like repeatedly with the same person, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then serial monogamy, they, they noted that too, which is they'll mate with one person for one season find another person, mate with that person for that season, move on, like season to season, it changes season to season. 
Yeah. And that's okay. a practice of mate switching. So they don't necessarily like, they're not, they're with one person, but then they, when that reproduction process is done, they move to another person. Got it. Okay. So interesting. Yeah. I thought that was interesting because I never thought about how monogamy developed, but it's like, it actually developed as a best mating practice because I mean, mm-hmm. if you think about it actually in our terms of dating, even today, it's like, oh yeah, you might be at a bar with, if you're, you know, there's 50 guys and let's say 25 girls or I don't say 25 or 24 girls, right? Your best bet, instead of, despite the fact that you want to get with every girl, your best bet is to find one to ensure that you just get someone at all, right? Mm-hmm. Versus mm-hmm. trying to put, round up or trying to get three different to agree with you or to not have competition or to to like you or what? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you to think about dating and, and like those like animal species terms, but that seems to be the only way some people think about it. Yeah. So, yeah. I monogamy. even think about like a lot of people who are quote unquote monogamous. Um, and the difference between, I think the, um, I consider humans to be animals, but the difference between the human species versus any other animal um, animal species is that they, um, uh, for social monogamy specifically, they have long term relationships and living arrangements and all that good stuff like that. Um, but I feel like the, the drive is very different. You know what I mean? Um, it's more from a biological standpoint of pushing on genes and having mm-hmm. an off uh, offspring who is um, going to carry on those genes to, to further that, that bloodline. Right. There's so much, um, there's so many other factors. Like there's pleasure involved, there's happiness involved, there's emotions involved. There's, mm-hmm. um, not to say that those things don't exist in animals, but we don't have any knowledge of those things existing to confirm that is why they choose that mate, or that's why they don't choose that mate, or that's why they participate in social monogamy versus serial monogamy. So very complex, but it is good to know that because I feel like we have a lot of serial monogamy going on exactly, um, and or uh, polyamory and polygamy, and uh, we don't acknowledge it as a socially acceptable practice. However, a lot of people do do are doing that. Um, mm-hmm. Hence cheating. Cheating would technically be either poly, polyamory or um, polygamy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, I think also, you know, I will say this just gender wise, women are conditioned to see monogamy as the ultimate uh, goal. Dream. For sure. Same mm-hmm. thing with marriage, like the idea of singular, solid, consistent mate is like the end all be all goal. And I and I think for I think for men too, I think that's actually a uh that's seen that's like the ideal, right, in our society. Yeah. But I think that people the un, the thing that they sweep under the rug is like that a lot of the times when people are saying like, oh, I'm just having fun or I'm just dating around. That really is a form of kind of like polyamory. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think also, too, the idea of monogamy and marriage is very different for women. Women are, ra- or excuse me, girls are raised to become a woman who um, you're raised to be ready for monogamy at any point in life, right? Or mm-hmm. basically right out the gate. Men are... Um, and you can say monogamy and marriage for women. For men, it's like you're raised to have fun until you're ready to settle down, you know? Yeah. Um, and so it, that little distinction is a big difference in um, the end result. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I think I, I just, it's just interesting to me that we live in a society which pushes monogamy and marriage for both genders, but how one gender is expected to go about getting monogamy is seen very mm-hmm. differently yeah. than others. Like, you know what I mean? Like women are, you know, like we were saying, taught to like be primed and ready for monogamy at any point in time. Yeah. Like that should be, you should be really ready to like, kind of like drop everything and like go be monogamous and be in a marriage mm-hmm. versus men. It's like, when you're ready, like do everything, do everything you're going to do, have fun and then decide to go be monogamous yeah when it benefits you Mm -hmm. yeah when it benefits you so 
yeah, there's, I mean, definitely gendered expectation there, which is probably not true for animal species. It probably isn't a gender expectation. It's probably strictly yeah. like survival, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think that's interesting. Like, I mean, as we continue to discuss like what marriage and monogamy looks like, we're also having a discussion about patriarchy we're also having a discussion about gender roles gender dynamics because that informs so much of how we see marriage and monogamy in our society for sure yeah mm-hmm. yeah so um since we're, we're discussing marriage you we wanted to get into kind of what the nuclear family looks like and um for those who don't know the nuclear family is kind of the idea of what the ideal family should look like in our society, right? Or what has been sold to us as the idea, ideal family. Mm -hmm. Um, So for those, I call it like the leave it to beaver thing. It's mom, dad, 2.5 kids, dog, house in the suburbs. That's like the ideal, what you're supposed to like be looking for in these like monogamous relationships. That's the end result, right? Is to have Mm -hmm. that nuclear family, be able to reproduce and be, and, and then also have a financials, you know, standard enough to purchase something like a house, a home, have some place to live, you know, and maybe mm-hmm. throw in a dog in there, right? So that's kind of the American standard that has been honestly created. Probably, I would say probably post-World War II, that's always kind of been the standard of like, like I said, leave it to Beaver. We want to see mom. We want dad. We want the kids. And we want the house, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I just, I think what's interesting about the nuclear family and on our discussion of marriage is that that's the idea that's pushed, but is that really what the nuclear family looks like today? What do you think? Mm, I don't think so. I think that is the I, the narrative that is still being pushed 1000%. Mm. Um, but most people outside of like uh, relationships, it's also becoming hard to even afford, you know, a mom, dad, two kids and a half. First of all, what is two and a point five kids can't have half a child, you know, um, a dog, a home in the burbs and all of that. There's a level of finance, um, financial issues that may prevent you from even having that for one. And for two, I think also, too, there's a lot of uh, females that are that do not want kids, you know, Um do not want relationships and so you have to also take into into consideration their outlook of life um for whatever reason they they have right so i don't i don't think um i don't think i think the nuclear family is still something that is pushed and i think that idea is pushed from a corporate scale because it, it does bring in financial resources for corporate America. But I think people are critically thinking about their lives, their wants, their goals, um, aspirations and things like that. And it's, it's definitely stopping the idea of this nuclear family. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, I think like you said, especially with corporate America, the nuclear family, they've been able to not only sell that to Americans, they've been able Mm -hmm. to profit off of it. Right. Like, Oh yeah you know, like housing markets. Not only do you have housing markets, but you have to sell things like appliances to people. They have there's certain social goods and or there's certain um goods and services people are gonna have to purchase because they're living in this type of family unit, right? Like you got yeah, mom, dad, even children. Even children, there's right? Things you have to buy when it comes to a child, you know? Exactly. You're expected to buy a kid a phone, buy a kid a car, buy them a you know, put a down payment on their home, like there's all these expectations of things you're supposed to do as this nuclear family um, that for, for one, you don't have to do, don't necessarily need. Um, but America sells it as you need it. You have to do this to be a good mom so or dad. Exactly. And I think so much of our like, even our like legal system, our school systems, our um, our social like safety net systems, those are set up around the idea that there needs to be two parents in that household raising the children. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, like even, I mean, Kate, people know Kayla and I come from a single parent household, so we don't even, we never had the nuclear family ideal mm-hmm. for us. But 
when, you know, we t- talk about things like adoptions or, um, you know, even fostering like children and in, in those situations, the mm-hmm. idea has always constantly been, we need two, a two parent household. You have two parents. Yeah, for sure. And it has to look like a man sure. woman. And it's like, so that idea is so like ingrained in our society that mm-hmm. we, we set up all of our family structures. Anything that has to do with family. We set up, we automatically think this is how we have to set it up. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think also, too, um, with the idea of the nuclear family, you have to take into consideration the different types of, of families that you have now. You have homosexual relationships. You have um, moms and dads who plan to be a single parent. Um, and, you know, maybe those kids are better off. I know for me and Courtney, for example, we were raised in a single parent household. However, we did... Um, visit our sperm donor quite frequently and I could not imagine them being together oh my gosh (laughs) I could not imagine that would have been a hot mess express so um like I feel like in our situation for example being in a single parent household and just having visitation was probably more um, beneficial for us as children and learning about life relationships blah 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 than them being together and teaching those very same things Exactly. So we definitely didn't have the nuclear family. Exactly. But I think the issue with the nuclear family, though, is like when that marriage breaks down, if it does break down, it all breaks down. You know what I mean? Like it's reliant Mm -hmm. on this male female marriage bond to exist so that the family itself can stay intact. Do you know what I mean? Because there's like we were saying, Mm -hmm. there's an economic benefit to the idea that dad goes to work and contributes to the household. Right. Same oh, yeah. thing with like um, when women did start to leave the house and like start to work, there was an economic benefit to that because now you have a two parent income, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, like when that marriage dissolves, then it's like okay, the house, the kids, like these things, yeah. split, right? Mm-hmm. So then our like notion of what is honestly like perfection or the ideal no longer exists, and we haven't. Mm-hmm socially we haven't totally come to accept that there are alternate forms of a family when there is no marriage or when Mm -hmm. there is no longer functioning and I think that that's hurtful because so many after you know like like we're saying like after women start going to work and children start becoming like latchkey kids like like our moms Mm -hmm. and, and things start to not be as cookie clutter clean cut because that's not how the real world works then we have no idea of how to imagine life without this exactly. yeah. household. And that gets dangerous because that's not reality. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And let's be honest. I think um, while people can be in monogamous relationships and those can be very successful, mm-hmm. um, looking at like divorce rates and stuff like that, I think they went down during COVID, but um You know, that could be a level of affordability, could be where you're going to go during COVID, who knows. Um, But even divorce rates, when you look at those, a lot of families do not stick together. You know what I mean? Um, And so it makes me question, why do we continue to push the idea of marriage and and or monogamy anyway, right? Exactly. Agree. Like, I think I think it is high time in our society to start reimagining what these things can look like and accepting Mm -hmm. that uh, a strong family bond or a marriage doesn't have to look like man and a woman and two children to make a family. It's like, Mm -hmm. like we were saying, a marriage doesn't have to be just man and a woman. And it doesn't have to be in like, you know, even a family doesn't have to look like two parents. It could be one parent, it could be a grandparent, it could be this, it could be that. You know what I mean? It's like, Mm -hmm. we, I think, if we are going to reimagine what these things look like, we need to start focusing on the kind of parenting, the quality yeah. of what is happening versus exactly. who it's, who is doing the, you know what I mean? Who is yeah. physically in that position, you know? Yeah. And just because you're present doesn't mean you are quote unquote a parent, you know what I mean? Or an actual father, present father who is, and I mean present as in like, you're just there. Right. Mm-hmm. That does not mean you're contributing to this, you know, family in a greater aspect than just being physically there. Um, And so I think that's what the nuclear family is, takes in, is about. It's about the image, the look, you know? Mm -hmm. It doesn't take into consideration the quality um, 
parents that you're getting, the quality maybe home you're getting, the quality animals, kids, and those things, and how you get to those to those quality points. It just looks at, oh, well, here's a picture of this. This is what you should have. Slap it on the board kind of thing. Um, and so you may be doing very well without dad present or without mom present or maybe, you know, an apartment in nature, you know? So mm -hmm. um, I think in this day and age, a lot of people are making – are making their idea of a family um, come to fruition more than the idea of the nuclear family. Exactly. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think they're, um, you know, one of the articles I was reading on the Atlant Atlantic was about the nuclear family and why it was a mistake to kind of craft the idea that what family needs to look like, because, you mm -hmm. know, since, you know, they're saying like it worked in like the fifties, but now that America is so like diverse women have gone to work, um, women, you know, earn as much, what well, I'll say earn as much because there's a wage gap, but women are earners as often as men are right in the household. Um, and so we're reevaluating what really the values of family really mean, not to mm -hmm. mention, um, divorce rates higher since like women have been able to go to work, right. Or leave home. And it's not just a gender thing. It's, it's not totally just about that, but that is one like made big reason. You know what I mean? Why these things were able to yeah. shift and change is because there was no, there's no longer a need for women to see marriage as a, um, a means of survival. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Um, so yeah. And I'm like looking at some of the, the statistics and they're saying since in 20, 2018, since 2018, 51% of, Americans age 18 to 34 are now living without a romantic partner at all. So like there's yeah. also the idea of singleness, which I think is relatively new in our society as well as like people opting to not even be in these kinds of arrangements. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Cause I feel mm -hmm. like before people strove to get to the nuclear family just to survive. Cause that was like what you had to do to exist really. But now that, you know, so many things are open to people. It's like, that's not necessary. And people are choosing alternate ways of living. You know what I mean? For sure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, heck, I live in a, a quote unquote, an, um, an alternative way of living. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I doing some self research or some self um, soul searching, figuring out what I do and do not want in a household and a family, um, relationships xyz i've come to terms that i am a nuclear family is not necessarily what i want you know what i mean mm -hmm. um and you know for various reasons um i just that's just not something that would benefit me in any way i don't think you know it, it will definitely benefit corporate america but does that truly benefit caitlin and caitlin's idea of what she wants out of life um and where she sees her, her sees herself going in the future so definitely doesn't and I'm I, I'm I'm content with where I am at so yeah I feel that and honestly like I'm not even in what would be considered traditional nuclear yeah. family situation like especially for our age because like Caitlin said we're 25 in 1950 would have been married with two kids by now seriously like mm -hmm. you know what I mean like but I think but like I choose to remain single and I see that for the next however many years until I until or if at all I find someone that I would yeah. decide to not be single anymore for um but or with I guess that's the better word not for but um but yeah so like neither one of us really choose tr the traditional path like we opt we opted for different things but we opted for the non-traditional thing you know what I mean because mm -hmm. we see like fits for our lives the what we want to build, the careers we want to have, and there's our personal fulfillment. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I definitely think it's high time we re, we totally like just reevaluate what nuclear family looks like. Um, oh, for sure. As well as really understanding that um, there's different types of ways for people to exist in relationships. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Very true. Um, yeah, and I'm actually, I'm looking over this, like, Atlantic artic article now, and I think it's actually really interesting. I highly suggest people read it. It's called, um, let's go back to the top. It's called The Nuclear Family Was a Mistake. It's an idea piece from the Atlantic, and it's really talk. It goes through, like, the intense history 
kind of of why the nuclear family was built, how Mm -hmm. it survived for a while, you know, in like mid 20th century. So the mid 1900s. And then now that so many other social factors have come into play, um, and economic factors have come into play, it's like the nuclear family is, is becoming more of a hindrance, that idea than allowing people to kind of evolve and change. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I bet. Yeah. So I definitely, I think it's definitely worth reading because a lot of times we think family is, family has like developed on its own and it's just this intensely personal thing. And it is, but you have to realize like the idea of having two parent household, 2.5 kids in house and birth, that was also kind of a construction too. It's like, you know what I mean? That was something that was like constructed in our society in mm-hmm. order to function for like how people should live. Cause so much of our lives are set up around that idea of like, got to work to pay for the house to, for my kids, my best. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. And I think people no longer want to live like that as well. You know what I mean? Like for me personally, yeah. I just don't want to live like that. I don't want to live to pay bills. I want to live to enjoy life. Mm-hmm. And so that's, you know, part of the reason why I don't subscribe to the nuclear family is I don't live. I do not want to live to pay corporate America, <laughs> you exactly. know? Um, I want to travel. I want to, you know, maybe have a farm. I want to live in like the wilderness and live my best life. Um, On top of, you know, maybe go back to school, maybe not go back to school, enjoy a career that I want to be in, not sit at a job for 20 years. Um, Mm -hmm. And so, which makes me always question, why are they still pushing the idea of a nuclear family um, if they now see that it's not conducive to the idea of the American dream now you know what I mean and me personally I would say create a new narrative maybe to push um with having a more di- a diverse mindset maybe but the idea of the nuclear family is there's a subset of people that I think would want that these days yeah well I mean I think what you just said like having the idea of a nuclear family has an economic benefit right like yeah. if we if these people own this house right they're indebted to us for however 30 years. They got to work this corporate job for 30 years of their life, right? Mm-hmm. In order to pay for said house or to pay for this car or to pay for the gym membership or the other economic social, like economic things that keep our businesses in play, right? Yeah. So, Because if they're only exchanging labor for money, then they're working just to pay for these like necessities, right? And if they mm-hmm. believe that what, the lifestyle that they're living is a necessity, i.e. I need this, I need to have my house, I need to have my wife, I need to have my kids. If they believe that's a necessity, they will sit at that job and work that job doing, you know what I mean, for our company, our corporation, make us more money in order to exist in this ideal that we've told them they need to have. Very true. That, you know, that's very true. It's not only a social benefit, it serves a... Uh, economic benefit. It helps like the government because if you think about when you fill out those tax forms, the, what's the first thing they say? How many dependents you have, right? Yep. How yep. are you filing single or not? They want to know your family status because that controls your money, right? So mm-hmm. there's an immediate social and economic benefit to you know our society pushing a nuclear family. And for sure. Even just like taxes, you know, like you said, mm-hmm. um, you, you fill that form out, how many dependents you have. But, you know, one of the biggest ways to get money back if outside of having a business and, you know, really knowing the tax system is to That's have true. a baby. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Have a child. <laughs> you, you know, they always say you'll get a child, have a child for like the first few years. You'll get a lot of money back. Um which to me, that's not enough of a reason to have a baby, but um, mm-hmm. it takes way more than a tax return to take care of that child. <laughs> exactly. But um, people people do it, you know? I've seen a lot of people do it. I agree. For that reason alone. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, and it's like so much they push that image because like you said, I'm a single woman and when I like go to do my taxes because I don't have independence, that's actually, they I don't get any tax breaks because of that. So there's less mm-hmm. of a tax I would have more in tax incentive financially, actually, to have children. Obviously, I'm not going to have yeah. children because co- children cost much more, and it's not something I want in part of my life. But it's actually, in the government's eyes, having children would allow me to have certain financial 
Like there's a financial incentive to having children. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think it'll be interesting now that the nuclear family is really kind of disappearing or is not even as common, especially with things like divorce or her you mm-hmm. know, step parents and all that. Since all all of that is sort of fading away slowly but surely, it's interesting to see how they'll change financial codes or our our society will change in relationship to how people are actually living their lives and setting up their families. For sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which brings me to the question of um so like what is what do you think marriage really means then? Yeah, well yeah, like we were saying with the family we did kind of get sidetracked talking about like the family unit, but what really centers this family, what grounds the family is that marriage, right? Yeah. You know, the family, the family cannot exist without this union between both men and women. So mm-hmm. what really we're saying, having the nuclear family strong has to depend on the strength of this marriage. Because like we were saying before, if yeah. there's no marriage, there's no union, there's no monogamy, mm-hmm. there is no family right so we're really the crux of this is marriage so back to your question what does marriage really mean you know i think it's it's perfect to talk about this in relationship to the nuclear family and talk about society and all of that because we see marriage as a contract it is a contract right it's a contract Mm -hmm. a an agreement between two people to exist in union with each other almost like a business right it's throwing your life away yeah so it's like (laughs) it makes like perfect and total sense that they would not because they the state sees marriage as a contract that then they would put all these kind of incentives on creating a legal family right yeah you know like the tax incentives the um the social incentives to having a family Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean yeah. So, so definitely, it is definitely a con a contract, one thousand mm-hmm. percent. Um, and while I was being funny and saying, you know, it's like signing your life away, but um, essentially to to the state, you now present as Mrs. and Mister, whatever the guy's name is, right? Mm-hmm. So it definitely is perpetuating the idea of that nuclear family, and um, but you know, having. Having everything that that they want you to have in that nuclear family, nuclear family. So, um, like personally, Courtney, what does marriage like mean to you, or what does it like look like for you if you were to be married? Um, for me, um, well, I don't know. I, I halfway can't really imagine myself married because I don't I just don't see marriage as a um I just don't see marriage as really something I want for my own personal life. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. Um so yeah. but if it was for me, um it would be I would have to re- totally reimagine what marriage looks like. I, I don't think it would have to look like that nuclear family standard. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But I I think marriage would be I would have a higher emphasis on the partnership versus the marriage itself. Even to the point mm-hmm. where I don't even feel like I would have to get married, like sign the contract. I could just have a partnership and not be married. Yeah. Because again, cool, like I like said, an Oprah Steadman. Yeah, like an Oprah Steadman, because I feel like if this is about our connection as individuals. Mm-hmm then um, we can just have that. We don't need that slip of paper to identify us in okay, in the yeah. state's eyes because I think sometimes that contract can put unnecessary pressure or, it, you know what I mean, if something were to dissolve, then it would be harder because there is a contract in place. Yeah, okay. Okay, that makes sense. No, I agree with that. I agree. Yeah. But yeah, what is marriage to you? How what, what would prompt you to get married? Um, so my idea of marriage is probably like left field. <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel like I, in this aspect, I, I kind of quote unquote, like, I think like a man, you know what I mean? I really, I see marriage as a business transaction. Um, I think that marriage has to be beneficial in an aspect of business. So say like something happens to whoever I'm with, um, 
you know, like protecting the things that we have built together, maybe for the like family wise. So like the kids, if we had kids together and stuff like that, like then I, w- I think I would get married, mm-hmm. um, which to me is more about business. It's not because I really want to be with you. Or I really love you. It's just to protect the things that we now have together and or the things that we will be building together more than anything. Um, so I, I think like having a partnership, quote unquote, would be like, I guess it's ideal outside of the business aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the only way I would get married is if I, if I would, um, would be for business purposes, like I just explained, um, and not just purely for love, but it would have to be somebody that I can do like that kind of business with, you know what I mean? Which normally I would not mix the two, but it would take a special person for me to get to that point um, and being able to mix emotions and, and feelings into that and knowing that if something does happen, then I can come out okay. Um, yeah. But then and only then I would on, I would only do it for business purposes. Yeah, I you know, I mean, I hear that because I agree with you. I do think it sounds cold, but yeah. I think I agree that marriage is that union. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's why, and because I do see marriage as kind of this business contract, that's why I, I don't think I would do it because I would be more interested in having a committed partnership with this individual, like a genuine connection partnership with them versus the act, the, um, you know, the, the marriage, like, I don't need the, the paper to say what I'm going to be doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely agree that, um, you don't necessarily need to be in, um, it doesn't necessarily need to be love as the only reason for getting married. I think there is so much more to a marriage today than, uh, what the nuclear family was pushing. Um, let alone a lot of, there's no no longer the idea that you need a man to be successful in this world too. So the ideas of of that is changing as well. So Yeah, agreed. I mean, you don't really need for women specifically, you don't necessarily need men to be um to survive. Mhm. Um because, you know, one of the things we you know, marriage has historically been about is property ownership, like it's transfer transferring ownership of not only property but also you know the idea of women as property right because historically marriage has been like when you have a dowry so like a single man is looking for a wife and to gain more you know economic power or to gain better connections or whatever like they would marry contractually in order to formally exchange the property or formally exchange titles or ownership of land or ownership of cattle or like whatever. Like, so the idea of marriage is really rooted in property ownership. So you have to really think about it from that perspective too. I think when you think get into marriage, like what Mm -hmm. does this really mean when we are saying I'm going to contractually bind myself to this person? I think we have these romantic notions now that marriage is totally about love and it's about connection and genuineness, genuine, like, partnership and I think it can be that but at the end of the day it is a slip of paper that you sign that the state recognizes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah for sure yeah. yeah and there's definitely a long which history. I wonder if sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you no, you're good. I, was, I wonder if the narrative was, was swapped like say one a woman is to marry a man right and she is deemed as the one who is, I guess, owning the property. Um, and they are looked at as a unit under her. Would marriage be as popular? Um, would it be as, um, would the narrative of the nuclear family under a woman be pushed as heavily as it was, as it is a man? I don't know. I wonder, I mean, we live in a patriarchal society, so, you know, things are really yeah. centered around the idea of men. Mm-hmm. But if we lived in a patriarchal, patriarchal society and marriage was, you know, more is benefited women contractually, then maybe it wouldn't be pushed as much. Like maybe it would be seen as this sort of alternative lifestyle or this alternative union 
That, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't think it would be pushed as the standard if it wasn't a patriarchal society. Because anything Definitely that, not. Yeah, anything I think that really genuinely benefits women is always seen on the as like alternative or like it's yeah the that. liberal side god forbid yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's just mm-hmm. like you know now when we see women electing to be single rather than to be married that scene is like out there or like strange mm-hmm. somehow because again yeah. we know statistically historically marriage has benefited men right yep yep mm-hmm. so um, but it's so weird because guys can have that same choice. They are, they are actually pushed to have fun before they settle down and get married. But mm-hmm. when a woman does it, it's looked at, oh, my gosh, like, God forbid she doesn't bear a child or doesn't want to be with you know, a, a guy for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's frowned upon. It's what's wrong with you. Something's wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but, I mean, th- to me, that's just like – the double standard in that is very toxic, which I understand our world is, is rooted in pa- patriarchy. Um, but the concept of patriarchy is not benefiting, not benefiting America at this point, let's be honest. Women would rather be by themselves or maybe rather be in, in a homosexual relationship um, because there's just certain things you don't have to deal with in those types of relationships that you deal with in quote unquote monogamy with a man or marriage with a man. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, yeah. Cause like I was saying, I just, I just feel like in the patriarchy, they're going to push whatever benefits men mm-hmm. so connection to women, even as property ownership, as if they look at it that way, that's a benefit to them, not only because they have the ability to gain status, they have the the ability to gain ownership historically of like land, mm-hmm. access to another family, an uh, access to another financial a set of resources. Um, it allows men access, whereas it uh, it sort of entraps women. <laughs> I hate to yeah, say it, it does. it's so like black and white, but historically that's what it has been. Is like the man gains access to something while the woman is mm-hmm. is becoming losing access to herself losing access yeah to something you mm-hmm. know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah so and not only is she losing access she's then expected to be quote unquote me and courtney like to call it um or i like to call it quote unquote his mother essentially um where she cooks cleans does you know bears the children not only bears them but also is almost the sole provider of said children um in the household as a whole. Exactly. So it's, you know, marriage is, I think people have the, especially women have the idea that marriage is 50, 50 and they kind of glamorize this idea, but marriage is not 50, 50, especially in a lot of heterosexual relationships, marriage in those is 25, maybe, maybe 25 men. And you're going to probably contribute 75% as a woman. Um, mm-hmm. Because you're, you're you, it, I think from a man's perspective, you're still expected to uphold those traditional roles and values and stuff like that because it benefits them. But they also want you to work. They also want you to provide financially. Like it's mind blowing to me. <laughs> exactly. Like I think it's the traditional relationships. We're speaking about traditional man, woman, heterosexual, man works, woman Mm -hmm. is at home, raised children. I'm speaking strictly archaic and traditional here. Um, Yeah, I think there's a, there's, has historically been a power imbalance with uh, heterosexual, like monogamous marriages. Um, Because again, like Caitlin was saying, there's an expectation of, not only domestic labor for women, bearing the children, raising the children, but also a lot of the emotional labor is placed on Mm -hmm. women in marriages. Um, And, you know, especially for women of color, sometimes the going out of the house and doing the actual physical labor, you know what I mean, has historically been associated with marriage for, for, um, for women. So again, for men, I really see marriage as oftentimes allowing men not only access to women and therefore a sexual romantic partner, but it allows them access to domestic labor, yep. you know, free domestic labor, uh, 
someone raising their children, someone to also provide physical labor in times of need, right? Mm -hmm. So they have access to this whole other resource that women are now, because they step into that situation, they're not necessarily, they, I guess they gain in the sense of like, a man provides a a roof, a house, a home, right? But if that Mm -hmm. is being controlled by one person, Tradition, in traditional relationships, then it is difficult to you. But you you step into a situation where you are uh, seen as a subordinate. Yeah, you know and at that point, it becomes a matter of owning. Not a, it's yeah. not it's not a partnership at that point. That is now ownership over someone. Um, especially, and I get you know in any relationship there is a trade off, right? Mm-hmm. But the the trade off is not equal at all by any means. Um, on top of, from a male perspective, typically, um, the duties that a woman does is is looked down upon as if it's not a job, it's not work, um, it's not a, a taxing responsibility to fulfill those, I guess, quote unquote, wifely, homely duties, right? But mm-hmm. those are even more taxing at times than you going to clock in from nine to five. You at least get to check out, you know? Yeah. Agreed. No, I, so I that brings me to the question, who do we really think benefits from um, monogamy? Not only monogamy, but marriage. Who really benefits? I mean, I think you can, you see, we lean, I think men benefit and statistically they show that like men live longer when they're in, when they're married versus women mm-hmm. who are single mm-hmm. that actually live longer. Which is another reason why I don't see myself getting married because <laughs> live longer Statistics. statistically, but um <laughs> But I think, like you, like we were saying, just historically, the idea of marriage has been about transferring ownership of a woman, number one, mm-hmm. but also property. Which, when we say women, we mean women for men as far as sexual partners, because I think that's really what that what that meant, um, especially historically, is a consistent sexual partner, as well as a. Um, as well as status, ownership, land, whatever came with the woman and her dowry, right? So I think also, I think, too, like the man. taking care of this household that they... Yeah, because there's, like, there's you know I, mean? I was saying, like there's the women have tradition, when they feel that married wifely role, they're traditionally doing the domestic labor, mm-hmm. right? So whatever house he's building for himself to live in, this woman is caring for it. Right. Yeah, it's like having a maid, really, that yeah. you can have a sexual relationship with, in all honesty, in my personal opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because of what our society has set up as gender roles. It doesn't have to be this way. It really doesn't. Because you can yeah. easily have a marriage where the man is at home and the woman is working or, you know, they split the domestic labor, the emotional labor. They're, they they really are doing these things in partnership with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it doesn't have to be this way. But I, when we're speaking traditionally here, heterosexually, in terms of gender roles, males benefit from marriage. Not to Agreed. mention that back to like our conversation about polyamory and um, and that sort of deal, the idea of because it was so difficult for women to like get divorced and leave these relationships. If I know I'm always bringing up Earl, but Earls are imaginary, like, you know, <laughs> Papa was a Rolling Stone type. In the 70s, if Earl is married to, you know, Pauline and they have two kids, but if Earl is made in a household and he feels like his only role is to provide the household, to provide the money, he provides the money, but he's actually living, he's in a polyamorous, he's polyamorous despite being mm-hmm. in a monogamy, monogamous relationship, you know, he's got, you know, Shirley over town with her two kids, right? Like we mm-hmm. all know this story about. Papa was a Rolling Stone. We know about Earl, Pauline, and Shirley. Shirley knew about Pauline. Pauline knew about Shirley. But what could they say? Because it was... Yeah, and what could they do? You know, they needed they a man at that it point. Was hard. Yeah, it was hard for Pauline to leave Earl. Mm-hmm. And Earl wanted to do what Earl wanted to do, despite without, you know, Pauline's consent. So Pauline's yeah. basically in a polyamorous relationship without consenting. For sure. You know and I mean? there, you know quote unquote they're his property say anything to him you know what I mean his subordinate um, question his behaviors or anything like that then it's like you know it's a whole problematic situation really if we're being honest yeah 
Thanks for listening to part one of our talk on marriage and monogamy. Join us in the next episode tomorrow night to hear the rest of our conversation.